Hope you are comfy in your comfy reading spots wherever you are. And today we are reading another story about the power of imagination. Probably one of my favorite things behind a story is showing you and tell and teaching you how important imagination is in this world. It's such a great thing to be able to imagine things. So we are reading Harold and the Purple Crayon love this story. It's so great. So if you have not heard this before, I hope you enjoy it. It's a great story. This is by Crockett Johnson. So let's get started and see how Harold uses his imagination. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight love walking in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight and he needed something to walk on. So look at what he is drawing with his purple crayon. He made a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost and he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. That is a long path indeed. Where is he gonna go? What adventures is he gonna have? But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path. So he left the path for a shortcut across a field and the moon went with him. Sometimes it is fun to go off the path, isn't it? Do some exploring. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. Just one tree. It turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got, when they got red. I love apple trees. That might be one of my favorite kind of trees. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. It was a terribly frightening dragon. I agree. I think it looks very frightening. <laughs> it even frightened Harold. He backed away. His hand holding the purple crayon shook. Oh, and what's happening? What does it look like? Suddenly, he realized what was happening. But by then, Harold was over his head in an ocean. So his hand was shaking, so he ended up drawing a bunch of waves. Now he's in the ocean. He came up thinking fast. And in no time, he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. Harold is good at thinking on his feet. That was a good problem solver right there. He quickly set sail and the moon sailed along with him. That moon is just following him wherever he goes. After he had sailed long enough, Harold made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was.
The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics, and the thought of picnics made him hungry. So he laid out a nice, simple picnic lunch. I love how simple his little thoughts and ideas are in this story. He is just out for a nice time. Nothing too crazy going on. There was nothing but pie, but there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best. That sounds like a good picnic to me. Who else loves pie? I love it. Almost any kind too. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. Ooh, so what is he gonna do? Who's he gonna share that pie with? So Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up. And off he went looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. That was very nice of him to share. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see. So he decided to make the hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought, he could see the window of his bedroom. He was tired and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. But as he looked down over the other side, he slipped. And there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air. Okay, another situation where Harold is going to have to think very quickly. What is he going to do? But luckily, he kept his wits and his purple crayon. He made a balloon and he grabbed onto it. Whew. That was a close one. Good job, Harold. and he made a basket under the balloon big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. It's a very cute looking house. None of the windows was his window. He tried to think where his window ought to be. So he must have traveled pretty far away from home. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. Do any of those look like his window? I don't know. I don't think so. He made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. Look at that, oh my goodness. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think where it might be. He decided to ask a policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him.
that's very nice. It's very nice to thank policemen or thank people that help us. And he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in bed. Then suddenly, Harold remembered. What do you think he remembered? What's gonna help him get home? And to bed. He remembered where his bedroom window was. When there was a moon, it was always right around the moon. And then Harold made his bed. He got in it and he drew up the covers. The purple crayon dropped on the floor and Harold dropped off to sleep. See his little purple crayon on the floor. I love this book. It shows us that big or small, whatever adventures we want to go on, our imagination can always take us there even if you don't have a magical purple crayon. So go out there, dream up big things, go on little adventures, and I will see you for our next story time. Bye friends.